geological history of the last 25 minutes. Remnants of a super volcano. There's a few drips under a bridge. Oh, back in again. Corner of bloody hell soon, isn't it? Hi, I'm Walt, and welcome to the beautiful and intriguing land of Scotland. Join me on my biggest ever road trip around the far north of England and the NC500 in my 20-year-old DIY Renault Traffic camper van. In this epic journey, I learn about myself, the landscape around me, and some of the basics of living in a van on the road. There are lots of ups and downs, twists and turns, and plenty of hidden gems are uncovered along the way as I meander into the wilderness. In this episode, I experience the fluctuating highland weather, the wild landscapes, crystal clear mountain rivers, and also I do encounter a problem with the van. Before heading north, I decided to pull over and stand outside in the freezing cold just to admire this wonderful view. It's a Loch, Loch Lomond. It's like a little island there, right in the middle. Just kind of going around the side of it. That's so cool. It's like a little beach down there. Can't really drive down it because it's too... There's no way I'd get back out again. But you could talk... I mean, there's so much rubbish and stuff as well, which is a bit of a shame. How many people have used like planks to try and get out probably. Don't know if it's successful doing that. If I got here an hour earlier, then I could have actually gone for a swim, which I think was my train of thought here. Uh, but it was kind of going dark and it was bloody cold. Not that that stops me. This episode covers the penultimate stint of my journey towards Sky in northwest Scotland, all the way from the southwest of England. Just wanted to get this on record that it's actually snowing. Although it's kind of slushy snow. Look at this. Nearly in April. So it must be... I wonder if it's like that all year round. I'm sensing that we might be at some elevation because there's a bit of a climb. And we're near Glencoe, and I don't know. It's, it's just south of Ben Nevis, which I think is the tallest mountain in the UK, isn't it? These mountains were white as I was driving along here. This area is near Glencoe Valley, and indeed I make my way through after a quick detour. I ended up staying a night here, and it was definitely a lucky find, as you're about to see. I missed a really good view, but it's kind of difficult on the road. I had this area to myself pretty much for 24 hours, apart from like one or two people just stopping to take the odd photograph. So that was one of the reasons why it was great, but also it's just so pretty. Oh, look at this place. I hope it's d done rain. It's just not raining or snowing. I could do with it just being dry for a couple of hours so I can chill outside because it's so cold. It's like two degrees or something. Yeah, two degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. I think it's just started raining again. That would be ridiculous. I think this is a forestry track, but as I'm re-watching this, I'm wondering why I didn't kind of explore it further. Maybe I'll have to go back. The reason I didn't include the name or the sign in this bit of footage is just because it's really quiet and, you know, I don't think many people probably visit it and it's pretty near Glencoe, so you could find it if you were looking for it. But, you know, keep it kind of slightly secret, I guess. Just uh, wandering around this little area of river, to be honest, just admiring all of the little shots that I was able to capture. Just a moment of sunshine. Oh, let's go and have a look at these rocks down here. There's like a well or something. Yes, there's a well made of rock. There's a few drips under a bridge. Look at this down here. It's been like all washed out or something. I don't walk down the steps. Might have to go for a cold dip. Look at this here. Look at the stone. It's amazing. It's like a little lookout. Yeah, I'm not really sure what you could see from the lookout, but it looks good looking in it. Oh, someone's got a bit of wood there. Just making some casual observations. <laughs> this is great. This place. 
and then you've got the mountain in the background, so... Look at the layers here. The colours. Yes, it's a bit damp. Sort of geological history right there. So you can see the geological history of the last 25 minutes. Millions of years worth of rock. How do I keep clean in a van? Well, this is one way to do it. Bathing in crystal clear mountain rivers is always an option when you're in the wilderness. It's always my personal favourite option because I don't have any running hot water, or a shower, or like anywhere to go for a shower, or any kind of will to wash myself in my sink. I do obviously have to do that, but this is just so much better. It's cold. I didn't really feel it that much. I, I said to my friend, uh, they asked me if it was cold, and I sort of just instantly replied, I had a hat, which apparently means that I wasn't cold. It did kind of work, as long as you don't stay in very long. And keep the ear flaps nice and dry, obviously. Yeah, I think I was only in there for like a minute or two, but <laughs> I want apologies. Apologies for that. I had too many wet clothes already in my van. Plus you can see a lot, it's pretty cold. Got some proper damp going on here. It's all like soaked through the wood. It's all down the other side as well. Underneath the mattress is all like soaked. I was just about to go to sleep. Ugh, can't be bothered today. It must run down the walls or something from the ceiling. I don't know, maybe the vent has a problem and it's going into the ceiling and not out. It seems to be a lot of water though. I don't know, I just can't think of anything else. There's no way that there's loads of different leaks on the outside, so it's got to be condensation on it. So this is the next day. It's all under the mattress. So I think this bit has got to be condensation or that's just kind of built up. But the trouble is I've got my water tank, like the main water tank is underneath the bed. And obviously that collects moisture on the outside when it cools down at night. So yeah, downside's having an internal water tank, I guess. But there's literally nowhere else I could put it. I wonder if I could insulate it or something a little bit. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. Maybe it's just from cooking in, in the van. But I've always got the vent open. See, the trouble is I think there's like gaps. I need to get all this off really at some point and... See if I can plug it, because if there's condensation getting in, up in behind the ceiling, which is entirely possible if there's... And then when you turn the fan on, it just sucks steam up, and it will probably just runs down the ceiling and the walls comes down here in the corner. It's, that's kind of my guess, you know. The screws get wet. Like, you touch those screws, it's like it's leaking through from the side, like from the wall, so... All I can do is just have windows open and stuff and try and let it dry out a bit for now. It's like no room, I don't know where to put anything now. It's so annoying. It's just like everything's just like hanging around. Well, I'm just hoping that throughout the course of the afternoon this will clear up a little bit. I sort of like knew there was a bit here, but I totally forgot about it. And then just like went to bed and left it a week. And you know, this is what's happened. Oh uh, well. What's annoying as well is I use this varnish on like all the wood, internal varnish. And it, clearly it's not even remotely waterproof. So like everything that I varnished is almost sort of a bit pointless really. It's kind of splash resistant and that's about it. Oh well. Oh, back in again. Making the most of it just before I leave. And I like the idea of doing it in the rain. It just seemed kind of exciting. Yeah, this little bit was like completely out of sight, hidden from the road. I sort of walked, you know, through a little bit of woods for a few minutes. Uh, it was just the perfect spot, <laughs> so there's no one else about. I just thought, why not? Sorry, sir, I didn't quite catch that. I'm actually on a clear day, it's be a bit more spectacular. My ears keep popping, so we must be pretty high up. The wind was pretty severe at this point. <laughs> couldn't hold the phone still and the driving was kind of interesting because at this point I still hadn't replaced the shock absorbers in the van 
I'm instantly in awe of the mountainous landscape, a stark difference from the area of the UK that I'm used to seeing. It becomes immediately clear to me that this area appears to be more exposed to unfavourable weather and sudden fluctuations in the conditions. The landscape seems to change its face within minutes, revealing mountains hiding behind fog, glistening sunlight peeking between valleys, yeah did you catch it, and then dense, dark clouds again. Or perhaps this is true of all of the UK, but I'm simply experiencing it head on. Glencoe is essentially the remnants of a super volcano that was active around 420 million years ago. It is situated in the southern part of the Scottish Highlands, which is the mountainous northwestern region of the country. Well, it's more spectacular than the Lake District, I think. The uh, gorge that I stayed in there, the valley, can see the mountains. This is Glencoe. Um, leading down the hill. I want to find the meeting of three waters. It's on the main road, but it's like just over here, according to Google Maps. Areas said to be part of the highlands often share certain geological characteristics, and the Hebrides, or islands northwest of mainland Scotland, are also usually included. I was basically at the meeting of free waters here, but I had to turn around and drive back down the road because I was literally sinking in the bog. It's the meeting of free waters. Oh, look at that. It's so bizarre. This is a pretty magical place right there. It's a bit touristy though, there's too many people about it. Yeah, there was at least seven people. But, um, it's understandable. Isn't it a road? Tell me that. I had to climb up on top of this bit just to get a better view and decide whether I was actually going to swim in it. So this is the famous wild swimming spot. Um, to be honest, it's already uh, pouring down with rain. That looks better. Those mountains in the background are absolutely huge. Just making some uh, casual observations there. Uh, this bit here was, I was kind of looking for a park up around Ben Nevis, but I did actually find one in the end. Uh, yeah, I had to look for it though.